Hey, Tracy, how's it going? Hi, Shane. Hi, Matt. Hi, it's Tracy. great to talk to you again, Matt. Yeah, how you doing? I'm pretty good. I'm glad to see you guys are healthy in this crazy time. So far, so yeah, good. So far. Right, let's keep it that way. And before I dive in, Matt, I've got to say, I'm a gamer too. Mm -hmm. So being told by my job to stay home and play video games until it blows over, that was a dream come true. <laughs> wait, wait, did your job actually tell you to stay home and play video games or did they say work from home? No, it legit, I work for a casino. Oh, oh. okay. Well, you're, so you're playing games at work then, yeah. Exactly, yes. <laughs> playing on the job. Hey, well, Oh, yeah, love it. Well, I've got an update for you. Um, I am no longer a Christian. Ah. Um, well, well, and, yes, and, and what, what are, are you now? Applauding. Did you become yeah. a Scientologist? <laughs> Please tell us. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not religious at all. Um, Yay. That's kind of where I'm going. Yeah. And it's thanks to you, Aaron, Seth, and everybody like you guys. Um, so thank you for, you know, helping me out of that. But you listened, you did the work. As is evidenced by other callers, you <laughs> did the work because yeah. not everybody who hears us say something. <laughs> not everybody who hears us. Follows yeah. through the path. I, I know. And you know, I actually, I am compassionate to people like that because I haven't completely let go of every single last thing. And I know how hard it is. Oh, even when you do let go of every last thing, still be compassionate. I mean, especially since you'll be able to remember what it was like to believe. And, and I, have, I have an example f from a conversation that I had this morning. Um, mm -hmm. uh, somebody asked me this morning what I thought if... Hey, I've got a friend, and when I'm feeling anxious, she'll ask me, you know, hey, do you want me to put a spell on your bracelet so that I will be with you when you go? Now, the person putting the spell, air quotes, on there does not believe any of this, and the, and the recipient does not believe any of this. It is a sort of make-believe game that they play so that they can metaphorically carry that person with them, and it's comforting. And... Mm -hmm. The person who was telling me this was perhaps uh, a little worried that I would think it was, I don't know, problematic. Certainly there can be problems with something like that if, uh, if somebody starts to begin to believe it or if they're, they're spreading that sort of misinformation and right. not actually using you know, skepticism and critical thinking. But the example that I came up with to show why I didn't have a problem with it is if you scrape your knee and I kiss it to make it better. Neither one of us <laughs> believe that me kissing your scraped knee actually does anything to heal it, but we understand right. it does something to comfort you. Right. And Absolutely. so even though we both know it's make-believe, I'm never going to go, oh, you shouldn't do that. Now, I might do it in the sense of you shouldn't do that because you're spreading germs on potentially like an right. open wound. The, <laughs> these days, I would hope that you're not going around kissing knees. Yeah. But Oh, that's nice and yeah. gaping wound there. Let me, let me. <laughs> but, but it's to show that it's okay. If you and I are in agreement that what we're doing is make-believe, then what we're really doing is carrying on some kind of tradition or even a tradition of our own making to allow us to be more compassionate and more comforted by each other. And I don't have any objection to that. And when people find their way yeah. out of religion, sometimes they still hang on to baggage. And we'll get to what yours yeah. is in just a second. Some of that baggage is incredibly problematic, and some of it's not. So so what baggage are you, are you struggling with? Well, it's funny because um, you literally touched on everything I'm going to bring up. Um, Real quick, I have a, a story for you. The last time I called you, I think I talked to you about tornadoes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, anyway, we got our first warning of the season, and as usual, I freaked out, went to the shelter, and there was this lady in there. And she saw that I was scared, and her suggestion was to pray and to let God wrap me in his love and protection, as she said. And, you know... I haven't been deconverted for that long. So inside, I cringe, but, but at the same time, it hurt because I didn't want to tell her I didn't believe that did any good. But at the same time, I'll be honest with you guys. Would I like to believe it? Yeah, I sure would. I but, would love to believe it. 
But aren't you happy that you don't have a false sense of hope? You know, I honestly, um, I, I don't think I can answer that at this moment okay. because, yeah, just being honest, like Matt said, um, even though I'm no longer a Christian, I still hang on to those comforting beliefs. Like, for instance, this corona thing that everybody's going through, this is kind of scary. And it is. I would love to, it is, man. I would love to think that, gosh, all we got to do is, is believe in God. He's going to make everything okay. Mm. And, and he's going to take care of us. So now I'm at the point, I just feel kind of. I might be able to help you with this. Where do we, thank you. Go ahead. Okay. So if a person deliberately invented COVID-19 and that person was in charge of coming up with a cure, would that comfort you? So, like, right, because you actually, don't want it, the it person would, who made the disease to be in charge of handling the economic aftermath and coming up with a cure and a vaccine. I mean, that would be a scary maybe. thought. Because I, I, I would argue that like the person who came up with the vaccine is the one who's most likely to know how to cure it. Or, yeah, came or the, up with the virus, the virus. Most, most likely to be able to cure it. But I get, I get the but point. Yeah, but you wouldn't want that person to be in charge of the economy, the aftermath, the handling of the situation, knowing that that person made the disease in the first place, right? Right. Okay, well, wouldn't it logically follow that if the God of the Bible existed, he would be the one that created COVID-19? I hate to say it, but yes. Right. <laughs> so isn't it a little bit more comforting to know that this isn't some uh, all-powerful being that designed this disease? This is a disease that exists for no intrinsic meaning, and we can do what we can to combat it. But if... If this disease was made by somebody who's all powerful, then I mean anything we're doing is essentially helpless. But there is hope yeah. because we don't have an all powerful being making diseases against us. Because if we did, we wouldn't stand a chance. Don't get me wrong, if there is an all powerful being and essentially COVID nineteen or whatever, pick something, doesn't matter, is God pointing yeah. a gun at your head to get you to pray to him to not shoot you. I right. Mean, mm -hmm. And, and to stop shooting my, my friends and loved ones. Right. I mean, I feel like th that's a similar response, but would you agree with me that, like, you're comforted in the idea that a person didn't invent this and that person still be in charge of handling the aftermath? Yeah. Okay. The, the, thing, that you're, the thing that you're finding comfort in is this, this idealized notion that there's someone out there who cares about you and has the power to help, and all you have to do is ask. That's a very comforting idea. Right. The thing is, in, it, it, while I understand why it could be company, comforting with respect to religion, it's even more comforting when there's an actual live human being who cares about you, has the power to help, and maybe doesn't even have to wait to be asked, but when asked, acts. Yeah, I see. This is why I like calling you guys, Matt and uh, Shane, because you give me stuff that I wouldn't have thought of myself. I've really been struggling with this, and you know, before I, I guess you'd call it deconverted, um, I was I was taught. Um, oh, how did it go? Um, I've always found comfort when we as humans don't have control. We can let the one who does handle it. And now yeah. that I've lost that belief, I'm just kind of, it's almost like I feel lost, you know? Right. No, it's, it's very comforting to have this idea that you know someone who can do anything and that you could appeal to that. I understand that. It, it's nice to be able to, you know, but, but it, it's, it's also kind of like we're, as, as a humanist, one of the main things that humans recognize is irrespective of whether there's a God, we are evidently going to be stuck sharing space with each other and maybe the only ones we can appeal to to deal with our issues and solve our problems. And so while it would be nice if we knew somebody who was all-powerful and who listened and cared, we have no evidence that we have anybody like that. And so it's up to us to become as close to that as possible. 
to be the ones who learn as That's much about point. the universe as we can and to be the ones who act on behalf of our sense of justice and our sense of fairness. Because the universe isn't fair, and even if there is a God, that God isn't apparently fair. <clears throat> and so why the hell would I pray to a God that I don't have any reason to believe exists and who I also don't think has any reason to be fair and who may not care at all about human endeavors because the entirety of life is just a place to wipe your feet before you go to the afterlife, which is the real party. Why would I spend any time on that when I can actually interact with human beings to try to find us and solve the problems that we have? That, that's a much better use. That hands and working in action toward a goal is vastly superior mm -hmm. to hands folded in prayer. And I actually like that point, Matt, um, because in, in my day-to-day -day life, um, I, I hate to use this term, but I do try to be a, quote, blessing to others. Yeah. I try to make uh, people smile, laugh, feel better, so, so I like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, did you guys go through this when you deconverted? Yeah, when I, when I first became an atheist, um, I didn't want there to not be a God. I just wasn't convinced there was one. Uh, however, I wanted there to be one. It wasn't until maybe a year or two after already being an atheist and starting to listen to some Christopher Hitchens that I realized, actually, not only do I not think there's a God, I think that we're pretty lucky that there probably isn't a God. <laughs> yeah. Really? Oh, totally. I, mean, I can see why. Yeah, because yeah, right, it's like I was talking about earlier. I would be very discomforted if right now I found out that there was a God that deliberately made uh, COVID-19 and that same God was in charge right now. And it's the same thing with, you know, um, people, people bring up, you, you get Pascal's wager all the time, which is the idea of, you know, it's better to believe and, and be wrong than to not believe and be wrong, which I would actually disagree with. But I would have to say that you're luckier to have the risk be non-existence than the risk be hell, right? I mean, not existing doesn't seem, I mean, just, uh, to a lot of people, it's scary, but hell that's a lot scarier. The, so I think oh, yeah. you're, you're luckier without something that is going to potentially torture you for all of eternity. I'm glad yeah. that that thing doesn't. I absolutely agree. Awesome. Um, and Matt will tell you, um, I, I've called in multiple times about that very subject, about right. my fear of hell. And that's something um, I don't believe in hell. But again, Matt has said this about people, and it's true about me, even though I don't believe it. I'm terrified when I die. Oh, oh my God, it was it was real. I, yeah. I get it. And I know people who have been atheist longer than I've been alive, which isn't that long, but still. People who have been atheist for years, and even though they don't believe in hell, they still have a mm -hmm. fear of it because it's something that was psychologically drilled into them at a young age. I'm lucky enough that I actually don't have a fear of hell. I was asked during... Um, a debate that I did recently, you know, what if I'm wrong and there's a God? And I said, well, uh, hell doesn't sound as bad as heaven to me, if I'm being blunt. Um, <laughs> not only that, it doesn't, it isn't logically consistent that I could be on fire forever. I mean, if there is a hell, if there is a hell, Tracy, where did it come from? I know. And God. I, and I mean, this I is a, this is a, a bit of a easy argument, maybe a little cliche to some people, but if there is a hell, then there have to be enough scientists there by now that they have air conditioning. I'm sure they've had nothing else to think about, but how do we cool this place down? Think about all of it. Albert Einstein, he's been there for a year. You know what I mean? I, I mean, do. That's pretty all, good. Okay. So for me, you know, the reason fire hurts you is because it's destroying your cells. Well, by definition, you can't be constantly being destroyed. That, that's logically inconsistent. The only like way I can fathom a universe in which I could permanently be on fire, like the only way I can rationalize that would be for me to constantly be being regenerated, which means I don't know why I would think I would be in pain throughout yeah. it. It would be happening yeah. always. So Yeah, that's my boyfriend's theory. That's the only way it could happen. You know, and oh gosh, even even when I was a full blown Christian, which again wasn't too long ago, um I always had a problem with the doctrine of hell, but but the way I was taught, it's like, well, you might not like it, but you have to believe it. 
Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I mean, and that's the thing. If it were true, whether or not we like it doesn't matter. There, there are right. people who view the atheist experience in, in these conversations, and their view of me and us is, oh, we just got angry with God, or we don't like the concept of God, or yeah. we don't want to be subject to God. No, I genuinely don't believe there's a God. And if there is a God who's anything at all like what's described in the Bible or the Quran, um, yeah. I, I don't, I, I'm not going to worship or serve that being. I find them morally repugnant and morally inferior, and I don't see that they're doing anything intelligent or compassionate or even participatory in the human experience. At most, what they've done is construct a scenario that sends countless of people uh, spiraling through a difficult universe, suffering from anxiety and countless other issues because they've been taught to let go and let God, and that shit just doesn't work. <laughs> I... <laughs> I mean, and, and I feel bad for admitting this, but I mean, I know. And just that, I guess, those last strings still tug on me. Like, how, how dare you say this? How can you say that? Right. You know. Yep. Uh, but I mean, the world that we would like to live in has nothing to do with the kind of world that we actually do live in. And I actually think there is some danger in people believing in things that aren't true. So I think... If you realize a harsh truth, then it's good that you can still acknowledge it. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm not gonna, I love talking to you guys. I just gotta say that, that's why I call so much. Uh, that, and I honestly don't have any other atheists or agnostics I can talk to. So I'm really glad you're there. Well, thanks, Tracy, the thank you. Thing, this, I gotta, I gotta try and welcome. move on to other calls. We only got like nine minutes left and oh. there's still like five people on hold, so. Cool. I'll call in again another time, guys. Thank you so much. They wanted me to tell you to get on Discord because there's plenty of people there to talk to. Yay! I'll look you guys up. All right. Thanks. All right, take care. Put the link up there uh, as well. Um, she seems like a really honest woman who's, I mean... Yeah, you know, and I get it. It's, it's difficult, but you know, she's she's finding her way through. Yeah. And, and the, sometimes the answer in life is tough. I mean, I remember when I became a determinist, I wasn't you know, I wanted to justify believing in free will, but I realized I couldn't do it, and tough, 